It's 24-7 and we'll come get it when it's empty. Call All About Storage Container Rental today, 423-267-2129. You know, we get to talk to an awful lot of people here on this show and often friends and people I meet will say, gosh, Julie, it seems like, you know, just about everybody in town. Well, let me prove to you why that is not a true statement because our next guest is here with a company that perhaps you too have never heard of and we should have because they've been around for a hundred years this year. So the he is David Puzan. He is the plant manager at Bootsy Unichem USA. Correct. Good to see you. Julie, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. So you're just a short stone's throw from us here at the television station down Suck Creek Road. We are. For a hundred years. That's correct. You're going to give us a bit of a history lesson, but y'all have been making, you make cement, cement right? Cement, yes. Uh, that then is the glue that goes into concrete. Right, it's, that's it's the powder the that, South. it's the powder that allows the mixture and ready mix to get hard, basically. So, and, you, go yeah. ahead. No, I, it's, uh, it's an ingredient that's, uh, uh, it was a technology that the Romans developed. I, I just know recently, I think it was Sunday's Chattanooga did something about uh, cement and how it's being studied. And it was a technology that was lost and rediscovered in the 1860s. And then uh, it's a, a product that is used worldwide. It is a commodity and it's a uh, it takes a lot of people, on, a lot of effort to get it made. So we're going to talk a lot of things, I hope, over the course of our conversation, because, you know, when you typically, David, as you've seen a bit this morning, we have retail shops and local nonprofits and things like that. So to think, oh, we get to talk cement with David for a few minutes might sound a little odd, but the truth is there's a lot of history there. There is. Chattanooga history there. There is. Uh, in 1920, a group of uh, bankers, businessmen, uh, Mr. Brock, Brock Candy Company, uh, they noticed uh, a need for our product in the South southeast and southwest there at that time according to research it's been a lot of fun doing this but uh in 1920 there was 110 cement plants in the u.s mm -hmm. there were only 13 in the southern region so 10 percent basically were very here. very limited and I, I can see some pictures being shown right now but mm -hmm. uh basically in 1920 they started selling deeds they raised $3 million. Uh, they were fortuitous and uh, looking forward uh, in the future. They got the help of people that knew how to make cement involved them. And they started construction in 1922. And in 1923, uh, the plant was ready to run. And actually the first clinker was produced October 12th of 1923. What did you call it? The first? Clinker, what it's, is the, that? it's the intermediate product. Uh, when you make cement, uh, you have certain raw materials you need. You need a good limestone, you need mm -hmm. a silica, aluminum, and iron source. Mm -hmm. And they're all combined and then they're ground into a very fine powder or in the case of Chattanooga plant in 1923, a slurry. And it's introduced into these long rotating kills where it's burned at high temperatures up to 2800 degrees Fahrenheit and the product that comes out is clinker. That clinker is then ground with uh, gypsum and a finish mill to make cement. So you mentioned some words that I know. Okay. Limestone being one of them. Correct. You and I were chatting before we went on the air. Y'all, they're right there on Suck Creek in that beautiful bend of the river. Um, and y'all were just recently a part of the river rescue cleanup. You've Correct. done that for many years. Yes. Work with the River Gorge Trust. But you were, we were talking about the beauty of that road, mm -hmm. Suck Creek. And you mentioned that you often get to drive it to go to the quarry. Right. So is that where you go to get then well, the material you're let's using? Let's back up a little bit, Julie. The original quarry, they used to mine under Signal Mountain. They mined into the mountain underneath the mountain. Mm -hmm. And they did that from 1923 to the mid 1950s. And 19, mid 1950s, uh, obviously you're getting homeowners up there. Mm -hmm. You're running, you're depleting your limestone reserves. They entered into a partnership with the River Gorge Trust to mine the current quarry in Jasper County on the Nickajack, mm -hmm. and that's where our quarry is right now. It's about 30 miles uh, to get stone on the river to our facility. Mm -hmm. It's about a 25 mile drive to get out there. So when you, when the average Chattanoogan is listening to you talk, mm -hmm. um, when y'all are creating this- Cement. Yeah, but you call it another- Clinker. Clinker. Yes. 
Is that is that what you ship out across the South? No, no, no. The clinker is a series. We generate high heat in the kill when we combine those materials that are ground and enter them into the kill or the pyro process. And what comes out, it went, comes in as a power powder. In, in years ago, it went in as a slurry, a wet product. Uh -huh. And it comes out as a, let's call it the size of a walnut or a gray nugget. It discharges at 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. And then it's cooled. It's sent to a silo, then it's ground into a finishing into the mill. powder. Okay. It's ground into a powder. Now, the cement, let's, when, when you talk about Portland cement, the grinding, uh, think of it as baby powder. It is that kind of fineness. Okay, so you are now, how many uh, of you are there now? There have been 110, 13 of them in the country, in the South, uh, when this all first started 100 years ago. So are you one of only a few remaining? No, uh, when I started my career, there was over um, 400 cement plants okay. in the United States in 1981. So mm -hmm. I'm dating myself. Yeah. But right now, as of this year, there's less than 100. Okay. The cement, so pl the cement plants are much larger now, much more efficient, and strategically placed. Mm -hmm. So. So I think it's worth uh, a nod that over for over 100 years now, or for 100 years now, y'all are still standing. Yes. I think that's very significant. It's a rarity. It's a rarity. So here you have this baby fine cement powder, mm -hmm. and you're sending it then to various ports of call, primarily in the South, well, right? Well, our, our major markets are obviously Chattanooga, uh, Knoxville. Uh, we have multiple terminals in Atlanta. Uh, we ship some bag products maybe to Nashville. We have shipped to Mississippi at times, Pensacola, Florida, but we're, we're mainly in the South. So if you're having a new driveway poured this fall, mm -hmm. is it gonna possibly contain your product? Very possible. Very this, possibly. Very possible in this area. So is the, some, is the concrete the only usage for the cement, or is it used in other things too and we don't realize it? Well, I'm looking at this building uh -huh. and I'm looking at all the cinder block. We also make masonry product. Yeah. And masonry is used on the brick to lay the brick. We also make, uh, what's, what's interesting is we've, we've made the same product for most 98 years, the same product mm -hmm. at Chattanooga. Our entire industry right now is making uh, what we call a type 1L cement. It has limestone addition in it. Mm -hmm. And our industry is going through uh, a change right now with regards to uh, looking at sustainability, looking at protecting the planet, looking to reduce our carbon footprint, looking to reduce CO2. Right. And this is uh, many of, not only our company, but our competition is doing the same thing. Uh -huh. So it, it's, uh, if you want to survive, you have to change, you have to adapt. And we're, do, we're doing that in uh, our, one of the organizations we belong to is called the Portland Cement Association. Um, it's a group of member companies, co our, our competitors all working together. We formed a, a roadmap to carbon neutrality mm -hmm. uh, to look at how can we improve. Do you anticipate that the cement will in the future go not just for what's on the ground, but in for use in building homes as well? Oh, it is in buildings yeah. right now. I mean, yeah. we, I mean, your driveways, your sidewalks, your basements, uh, bridges. Mm -hmm. uh, a whole but eventually lot. in the structure itself of a home. Well, there, again, I, I, there are something called insulated concrete forms. Yes. Where instead of building a stick house with wood, you can build a house with those forms. Yep. We talked to a guy, Aaron Caldwell, who does that very thing. So, yes. 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 I mean, it, it, it could be a little more expensive to build a house, but it depends where you live. And the durability the of durability it. The durability is. So the other thing I failed to mention, 100 years ago you formed. Yes. The name today is Bootsy Unichim. Mm -hmm. Was that the name 100 years ago? No, it was not. It was called the Signal Mountain Cement Company. We're still referred to that by a lot of people. In 1947, we were bought out by General Portland. And from 1947 to 1982, uh, we were known as General Portland. And then we were sold to a company called Lafarge. But because of FTC rules, Lafarge had to sell us and they sold us to a group of Italian investors. Okay. And uh, the Bootsy family, I don't think was involved in 1982, but mm -hmm. uh, they have been very prominent with the new exp 
plant because this is the third different plant that has been in this location. Well, the next time you go to the hardware store and you come home with a bag of ready-mix cement, there's a good chance that your product is in there. Well, if you see a, you might see a Bootsy bag, you might see a Quick Crate bag, and there's, there's a very good chance that, yes. Thank you for the history lesson. You're welcome. And congratulations on 100 years. It's very special, and thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to do it. Thank, thank you, you so Julie. much. The Hip House is your local home for top shelf CBD and hemp products. Come meet our experts in a comfortable, inclusive environment. All the items we carry are from vendors we have personally verified and trust. The Hemp House, four locations, or visit us at hemphousechat.com.